Yes guys, welcome back to Hair System DIY, your go-to hair system YouTube channel. I hope you're all doing super well today. We're going to be talking today about imagining life without hair, what I've called the baldness experiment. Now I'm not actually going to be doing this, but I'm going to be imagining what life would be like without hair. Now I can't speak for you guys, but you may well have a very, very similar story to what I've been through and you may find it relatable. Before we talk about this topic, if you are interested in a hair system and you kind of like mine, uh, levividhair.com, they are offering 15% off. You can find the discount code in the description beneath this video. A link is going to pop up on the screen right now as well, so you can check them out or wait till the end of the video and then go to the description box. So for those of you fairly new to my channel, you may not be aware of my backstory around why I wear a hair system, the actual reasons why I ended up going down this route. It dates back 32 years, so I developed a hair pulling condition called trichotillomania. It was so long ago that I don't even remember it starting. Apparently it started when I was at nursery. I came home one day and I was just pulling my hair out God only knows what happened at nursery that day. Very possibly something quite traumatic. I don't know. Maybe my brain has blocked it out. But anyway, ever since then, I've had a very, very challenging relationship with my hair. Initially, it was being pulled out in clumps and I'd have massive ball patches and I got teased at school mercilessly for that. And then as I sort of developed into my early 20s, I started actually developing male pattern baldness. Now is a reason for that because I basically ruined the hair follicles that were originally there through the trichotillomania or was it just genetic? I think personally it's a mixture of both. I think it's a mixture of genetics and trichotillomania. Now ever since this hair pulling condition trichotillomania developed I've had low self-esteem around my hair and my appearance and it was mainly because of dealing with the trauma of going into school and as many of you guys will know, kids can be cruel. They really, really can at school. So I was getting bullied a lot. I was getting teased a lot. And it all centered around my hair. And this sense of low self-esteem, which some people actually have told me I have masked or I masked quite well back then. I suppose I just suppressed it all and put on this sort of confident mask. But inside, I was very, very insecure completely lacking in self-confidence and self-esteem, but I was just about getting by. However, when the hair loss started accelerating and it was becoming pretty noticeable, and I'm gonna put up a couple of images and I'm gonna put up an image now on the screen so you can see it when it was at its worst. As you can see, I've barely got any hair left on my head. It was so thin at that point, I could barely even pull it out. And this actual event, it was a, it was a music festival and that was literally the last time I went out socially for over a year. It got to the point where my self-esteem had got so bad and there were interventions that I was using which just weren't very effective. One of them being hair fibers. I was using hair fibers that day and you can see my thinning and shedding was so bad that it wasn't making much of a difference at all. And I'm just going to put up a few more images that you can see on the screen right now. When I got to the point where for me the trichotillomania was pretty bad, the hair loss was pretty bad, I just started either consciously or subconsciously just wearing hats everywhere. It was fairly conscious when I think about it. I just wore hats everywhere because I was so ashamed of my hair loss. I was a guy in my 20s. All of my other friends had full heads of hair. And I just felt kind of like, why me? Like, what have I done to deserve this? I've already had this horrific journey with trichotillomania. And now all of my hair is falling out and it's not growing back. What have I done to deserve this? And there's a lot of self-defeating language that I was using to myself. And that really isn't me. That's not my true self. But, you know, hats felt like a really good short-term solution until I could find something better. But at that point in my life, I felt ashamed. I felt completely ashamed of my appearance. So now we're gonna project into the future and imagine if I hadn't taken action and got a hair system. We're gonna look at three aspects which would likely have had a massive impact upon my life moving forward. So the first is societal norms and expectations. Now guys, we really live in the digital age, the social media age, we're constantly bombarded on Instagram or Facebook with images of people who look flawless, people with perfect hair, people with a perfect tan, people with minimal wrinkles on their face. In 2024, at least in Western civilization, it's probably the healthiest humans have looked. 
in our whole evolution. And the reason for that is because of cosmetics, it's because of hair transplants, hair systems or whatever. But if you don't meet that criteria, sometimes you can be viewed as less than. I remember reading a study a couple of years ago that said they basically did a series of interviews. Half of the people were bald and half of the people had hair. And 75% of the time, the people with hair actually got the job, even though a lot of them were less qualified. Now, that could be an appearance thing. It could be a lack of self-confidence from the bald men. I don't know. They didn't go that specific into it. But it really does shine a spotlight on societal expectations and societal norms. You kind of have to look the part. I think if you go back 70, 80 years, societal norms weren't quite the same. They're a lot more relaxed. Obviously, we didn't have interventions like Botox. We didn't have procedures like transplants or SMP. People weren't getting facelifts back then. So societal norms have certainly changed in that period. And I actually did a video going back a couple of years. I'll link it at the end of this video where I was speaking to two of my wife's best friends and they were saying, look, we wouldn't date bald guys. And these are women in their 30s. They're like, no, we would not date bald guys. We want men with a head of, we want men with a head of hair. We want them to be a certain height or a certain look or whatever. Expectations have changed now, especially in the digital age where we've got things like online dating. It really is survival of the fittest or survival of the appearance of the fittest. Now, the next aspect is personal confidence. Now, moving into the future, I don't think a huge amount would have changed. I stopped going out after that music festival. I didn't go out for over a year. And I went to therapy and it really, we actually delved into the issue I had around my hair loss and it dates back a long way. And I think because I've always had such a challenging relationship with my hair, the fact that I was losing it was traumatic in and of itself. Aside of the teasing, it was traumatic. And I really couldn't get over that speed bump, even though I had hours, literally hours of therapy to try and work through this. It just didn't shift. I came out of those six sessions and I was like, I just want hair. That is what's going to make me feel better. That is what's going to make me feel me. So I imagine had I not had hair moving forward for the rest of my life, I would really have struggled. I would really, really have struggled societally. I wouldn't have gone out. I wouldn't have gone dating. I could well still be living with my mom. I don't know. I may not have had the self-confidence to actually go out and find a place and share with people. It really was a fundamental shift when I actually got my first hair system. And the last aspect I'd like to look at, and this is actually one positive for being bald, is grooming routine is a lot easier. So moving forward in my life, the grooming routine would have been way quicker. You know, shave your head maybe every four days doesn't take too long. Obviously, with a hair system, there's more maintenance involved, you know, maybe like one to two hours every couple of weeks. However... What I get with the hair system following the maintenance, I get hair back, I get my identity back, I get my confidence back. I think looking in the mirror every three or four days and just shaving the hair that was left, it would serve as a constant reminder that I don't have hair. This has caused me to lose a lot of self-confidence in myself, a lot of self-esteem. I don't feel like I can go out because of this. And I felt absolutely trapped. And shaving my head every three days would be that reminder for me. I feel, I think if you're really struggling and you feel trapped and you feel like your confidence has been absolutely destroyed and you don't see your confidence coming back, then maybe consider some sort of intervention. Maybe consider taking some sort of action. Because for me, getting hair back on my head was way more effective than having three months of therapy about it. Now, everyone's different, obviously. And Therapy is really, really helpful for a lot of people and maybe it can help move you forward. But I'm just giving you an insight into my story. What I will say as well is with the hair loss issue, if I hadn't taken action, I honestly don't know where I'd be right now. I went through some dark times, especially prior to getting a hair system. And it wasn't just the lack of hair on my head. It were a few other things as well. But I genuinely don't know where I'd be. I certainly wouldn't. What I do know is I know I wouldn't be here. I know I wouldn't be in a loving, happy marriage. I know I wouldn't be living where I've wanted to live for years and years. And I certainly know that I wouldn't be socializing and I wouldn't have made the friends that I've got now. So it's been so, so important for me. So what do you guys think? Have you been through a sort of similar journey, a hair loss journey where you've lost your identity, you've lost your confidence? 
you felt too scared to socialize, let me know in the comments box below. If you've been following my content and you're new around here, please don't forget to subscribe. If you'd like this video as well, I'm gonna try and get 40 likes on this video. Now, if you're looking to learn more about societal perceptions around baldness, especially for young guys like me and many of you guys watching, you might wanna check out this video that's popping up on the screen right now. It's a conversation, a brutally honest conversation that I had with two of my wife's best mates around what they look for in men and their opinions on baldness. So feel free to check that out and I will speak to you very soon. Bye for now.